Following this interview that I did with Baltimore Mayor Byron Scott at Netroots Nation 2024. Baltimore appreciates you, but the entire darn country for, for the perspective that you gave when pushed during the bridge collapse. I want to first ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself because people don't know. They see a young a young black man. Youngish. Yeah. And, no, I would say a young black man who has taken the city of Baltimore and um, you've not, you've, it wasn't given to you, you earned it. You earned the city. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I am, I'm a Baltimorean, right? right? I've lived in Baltimore for 40 years. That's yes. right. Like, uh, oh, you're 40 years I'm old? I'm 40 years old. Oh, I thought you were young. I wish. Okay. I, okay. I look, I keep myself healthy. Okay. But uh, when, when you grow up here, uh, I grew up here in the 1990s, 80s and 90s, born in 1984. Right. Uh, but when you think about the time that I grew up in Baltimore City, right. uh, gun violence is what pushed me into service. Uh, the first time I saw someone in the shot, I wasn't even seven years old, right? And no one really cared. Right. Uh, and I pestered my parents about it, and they eventually, you know how black parents can be. Oh, yes. they, they, if you want to change, change it, right? Like in knowing, understanding, and then growing up here and living through Zero Challenge and all of these things, uh, it's what pushed me to want to be in service. I actually came to City Hall starting as an intern at 23, uh, been a staffer later that year, and been in City Hall for now 17 years. So when uh, we have something like the horrific tragedy with the Key Bridge collapse, um, and you have folks who have absolutely no clue about running a city that's uh, full of almost 600,000 people and a full billion dollar budget. Uh, they have no clue what they're talking about. They have folks saying like, I didn't earn it, right? Well, I earned it multiple ways. First and foremost, like I earned it because, uh, yes, I am the DEI mayor, the duly elected incumbent mayor because oh, oh, the residents oh, 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 oh. of the city. I love that. The city yes. elected me, have now elected me twice uh, to be the mayor and multiple times to be a city council rep. But more importantly, I earned it because I have the lived experience of living here, growing up here, working here. I also have a degree from one of the uh, most stringent, uh, stringent liberal arts colleges in the country, uh, St. Mary's College of Maryland, which is the National Public Honors College, right? right? So for someone to say, I didn't earn it, it's just so ridiculous. And I just push on, call those folks out for their racism, let them know that they have absolutely no clue to what they're talking about, let them know that one of my purposes in life is to make them and their way of life very uncomfortable and undo that and keep moving on. One of the reasons I like that we have uh, young folks taking on the system and got this too often, we've seen people just take it. Yeah. And, and I, like, I like your response because you just went ahead and said plain. But it is. What it is. You call it out. I think that for me, that's part of my upbringing, right? right. So uh, I grew up in a family of proud black people. Yes. You know, I have my, my dad, my uncles, right? I'm proud black men and proud women. But also what folks don't really know about me is that my dad's family is from the South. It's from rural North Carolina. My mom's family is from the South and outside Richmond. I spent my summers as a kid on my grandparents' farm in North Carolina. I've seen... Uh, that that southern brand of racism straight up, right? I remember the first time a white person called me the N-word, right? right. And it was in 1992. Right. I was eight years old. That wasn't that long ago. And knowing that, but also knowing the pride that my family has and what my grandparents on both sides and my great-grandparents went through, right? My, my dad, my baby brother actually lives in it now, right. grew up in a house with him and his eight brothers and sisters and my grandparents that my grandfather built with his hands. Uh, that was three rooms, right? To come from that, there is no way I'm going to let anybody say anything to me or about me in my name without fighting back at that immediately. I don't have to turn another cheek. I can say it with my chest. I can be proud of being black with my chest. I can call a person race with my chest and be better at doing the jobs that they were had for so many years at the same time. Um, exactly. Now, what's next for Baltimore? I mean, uh, Baltimore is a troubled city. Now, uh, you've done quite a bit of work in, in moving forward. What do you have planned? What do you want to see in Baltimore? 
next five years? Well, we want to continue the work, right? When you think about uh, just last year, uh, we uh, led us through our largest reduction in homicides that the city yes, has ever seen at 20%. Yeah. And yeah. now we're at a 32% reduction on top of that. We want to continue to grow that yeah. and grow it through our way of our, our comprehensive violence prevention plan that concludes our growing our community violence intervention ecosystem. We're going to continue this historic investment we've made into young people, both in our school system. Over the last few, few years, Baltimore City Public Schools have built and renovated 27 new school buildings, and we have four more coming on the way. We built five rec centers in my time in office and have five more on the way. But now we also are growing our economy and growing in a better. We had the eighth fastest growing economy in the country last year. Baltimore's economic growth outpaced the U.S. growth last year. And we want to do that in a way uh, that so all Baltimore's can benefit. Tackling those long-term issues like vacant housing, we have it at its lowest point in 20 years. And now we have a plan, a $3 billion plan to end that over the next 15 years. I won't be here to see that all the way through, but I'll be the person Wait, that starts it. Uh, we do have term limits. I could actually do three terms, but mm -hmm. based on the rules. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't believe that someone should, uh, and today I will tell you that I, I, I won't be here beyond that ability. I'm not right. gonna try to change rules and stay long. Like other that. people. Like other people do, no. Yeah. Your time is your time and you move on, you pass it to the next generation. And we're gonna do that in a way that's very unique. Uh, when you go to cities and you talk about tax breaks, it's normally to build places like where we are right here right. in downtown Baltimore, which is fine, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're helping our downtown grow too. Right. But we're going to use tax breaks to tackle our vacant housing problem in our neighborhoods, which will help bring up those historically disinvested neighborhoods in our city. Your mayor, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Speak. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.